All right, Gen Z is fucked, says somebody. I was actually complimenting that generation after uh, the millennials. I thought that uh, the millennials, you know, they got a lot of shit dumped on them. And I I don't know that they even got to enjoy uh, being young with all these fucking older people after they went around and did all the shit that they did. I don't know what they did. They over, they babied them. I have no idea. Uh, Gen Z is fucked. Or maybe it's because the, uh, the way baby boomers were raised. Did baby boomers have millennials? I think they did. As did my generation, but I just waited so fucking long. Gen Z is fucked. Hello, Billy, the ball bag. Burr. Uh, I was listening to your most recent podcast and the guy that I was talking about Gen Z. What? Okay, I was listening to your most recent podcast and the guy that was talking about Gen Z being a bunch of pussies. Um, I don't know. They seem pretty cool to me. I'm also a Gen Z cunt and I'm beginning to see this molly coddling of stupid. You spelled stupid wrong. And oversensitive cunts more often. Maybe you spelt it wrong on purpose. I am from Scotland, so our cultures are a bit different. However, I see my fellow Gen Z compadres on Twitter all snowballing onto this bandwagon of being dim-witted pussies and expressing ridiculous opinions. Well, I just think that's that's a symptom of social media. I see you see older people. You want to see older people do it? Go on Facebook. They're doing the same thing. That's just I don't know what it is. I, they, I'm sure that scientists are doing a study on the effect of. Um, social media on your your own mental health your ego and all of that shit so i wouldn't put that all on just gen z people but anyways uh, what's becoming popular among these cunts in the past two three years is being a cool hipster anti-capitalist commie with no good patter whatsoever uh i am in no way saying that the capitalist countries we live in are a utopia however i'd have to say after just knowing the history of communism it's probably not the best idea to start a fucking revolution anytime soon. Well, do you really think they're going to? They're not. They're just taking on a personality. You know, I was the fucking, uh, well, not until I got older, but I was like the conspiracy theory guy. Reading Behold a Pale Horse and all of that shit. Uh, these fucking spastics are now also, oh, spastics. Ooh, coming from uh, Scotland. That's an edgy word. Not supposed to say that over there, I thought. Are now also doing what they proclaim the big dad capitalist oppressor has been doing to the people for the past century by shouting down any opposing opinion and labeling them as racist, sexist, and the rest of it in the name of free speech and freedom. Uh, I nice one, you bunch of fannies. I wish I could say that in a Scottish accent. Um, I hate to tell you this, dude. You're putting this on a generation. There's liberals my age that are doing the same thing. Um, they are unbelievable liberal. They are unbelievably liberal as long as you, you see the world exactly the way they do. And if you don't, they try to figure out a way to take away your career. Um, anyway, I'm not what you would call right wing or left wing in any way because politicians are a bunch of arseholes and I'd rather not side with any of the cunts. Anyways, Sorry if this was a bit long. I just wanted to give my two cents on the matter. Hope you're going well. You're doing well and can come to Scotland, Glasgow for some stand up as soon as this lockdown bullshit's over. Uh, kind regards and go fuck yourself. Yeah. Um, listen, I, I know that 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 cunt that you're talking about is a new breed of cunt, but I want you to know that that transcends generations. That that person is. Uh, is in the park, you know, where the parents are watching their kids. There's that person. They're kind of everywhere. The social justice warrior, um, who I really believe most of what they do is not actually for people of color. It's so they can talk about it amongst their liberal white friends later to say the amazingly brave thing that they did, the tweet that they put out or the thing that they said that they didn't tolerate. Like that, that's how deep they go into actually solving I guess all the racism in the power structure is they um, they take a firm stand on things on social media and then they get back to their white lives. Um, all right. I don't know how to say this word. 
kombucha. A nice alternative to boozing. Hey, Bill, uh, put you through that fucking space wall burr. Oh, nice. A little F is for family and Mandalorian reference. Uh, greetings from a fellow fucking ginger. I love when a fellow redhead writes in. Uh, nice work with the sobriety. I wanted to share something that helped me cut down on the booze. It's called kombucha. Hope you haven't heard of this. I've heard it in a writer's room used as a reference, but I thought it was a coffee or something. If you if you have, feel free to toss this email in the trash. It's fermented tea, and it's super healthy. It has living bacteria in it, so it's great for your gut health. Think yogurt. It's a solid alternative to beer. I'm old enough that I would try this. I drink it when I'm gambling. I'm gaming, sorry, with my buddies and don't want to drink alcohol. It's got the right fizz and gaseousness, so it makes me feel like I'm drinking something with some substance. Oh, by the way, at that restaurant, too, I ordered an orange soda that they made, like, homemade. It was fucking unbelievable. Um, anyway, it does have super low alcohol, 0.25 or minus 5% as a as a byproduct of the bacteria, but you don't feel it at all. All right. You don't have to, you'd have to drink 10 to, to equate one Miller light. There's a ton of flavors. I like the, the honey. If you get some swirl it, don't shake it. Uh, the thing will erupt like a freshman on prom night. Hey, nice run. That's a, that's a decent joke. I figure it might be, uh, of some use to you. Cheers and congrats on the wonderful family. Thanks for all the laughs and insight. Hearing you acknowledge and work on your anger has been a big help for me to do the same. Cheers. Well, that's nice. I hope everybody does that. That's why I'm not into cancel culture. I've made every fucking mistake you can make. And I think that, like, as long as you're trying to be, as long as you look back on yourself five years ago and be like, what the fuck was I thinking? Why did I say that? Why did I do that? If you have some sort of shame looking back at yourself five years, I feel like you're growing as a person. <laughs> but this whole fucking thing, going back into somebody's past and being like, aha, what is this about? It's about being a human being and being wrong in that moment. Is that one moment what I am? Because I've done some good things. Why can't you just look at the one good thing I did seven years ago? And then, aha, that's, that's who he is. Give him a Nobel Peace Prize. I'm all of it. Good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, socialism. I, Bill, you redheaded fuck. <laughs> I really appreciate the bluntness of that. How, I, how are you? Um, last week you mentioned uh, you don't know why people demonize socialism. Um, I was really taken aback at that statement. Oh, Jesus Christ. Every country that has tried socialism has failed and it's responsible for tens of millions of deaths. All right, so would you say capitalism is working? And is it is not, uh, you know, when like, what is it, like 99% of the wealth is in like fucking 2% of the people's hands? All of these tent cities, you're telling me this is working? You don't think capitalism is responsible for tens of millions of deaths? Um, anyway, Russia, Germany, China, Cuba, and most recently Venezuela have tried or right now are socialist countries. Um, As far as I know, whatever Cuba was trying to do, we prevented them from doing with a fucking embargo or whatever the hell we did. We've been fucking with them for 60 years. So I think you're looking at like, you know, like what a lot of people do is you look at your own country through rose-colored glasses the same way you look at your own sports team. Like, oh, my team doesn't cheat, but your team does. Um, I'll be honest with you. I don't think any form of government works because there's human beings running it and there is inherently going to be backdoor deals and people, you know, just with, are just going to have the in and they're going to pay off politicians and all of that. Okay. Um, I do, what I do like about this here is that you have the opportunity to move up. You're not stuck with where you're at, but I mean, you're, you're really, you're really sort of looking the other way with what capitalism has done to other countries. Um, all the sweatshop labor, all the wars we've fought in over air quote freedom, where most of it is about, you know, natural resources, all of these fucking countries where we've gone in and, 
you know, stuck in heads of the government that are going to do what we want to do so we can fucking take advantage of them. Like, I mean, to sit there and look at capitalism like, like it's, you know, I don't know, dude. But once again, I don't even think you can blame capitalism on that. I think you just can blame sociopathic people that both crave and ascend to positions of power. Um, all right, I took off my Birkenstock, so I'm going to read, read the rest of this here. Okay, socialism all starts the same way. Create a boogeyman like corporations, the rich, or a race. Oh, yeah, we've never done that in the, this country. We've never created a boogeyman. <laughs> we, yeah, there's never, I mean, Jesus Christ, buddy. Blame them for all your problems. Yeah, we never did that. The leaders then promised to fix all the problems. Oh, boy. Slowly, the government starts to control every aspect of your life. Why does this sound so familiar? Promise that every... Aren't they, like, recording all our phone conversations now? And we're slowly on our way to getting microchipped? Uh, Promise that everybody will have the same equity and outcome. This creates mediocrity, loss of the middle class. Loss of the middle class? Where have I seen that before? Uh, of innovation, uh, punisher. You know, corporations are buying houses now. They're just buying them up so they can fucking Airbnb. Like literally, the American dream: buying a house. They're going to take that away in this country. Uh, that reduces the tax money coming out into the government, buddy. I can't fucking read all of this horse shit. This is everything that we're doing too. Capitalism. Okay, I'll get to the end here. Capitalism. Now, you know what? Let's just read all of this because it's fucking hilarious that he's acting like none of this is happening in this country. Um. Uh, and you know what's funny about people? You don't like it. Get the fuck out of here. This is my favorite thing ever. Yet you can look at your sports team and be like, what the fuck is this coach doing? And then nobody goes like, you don't go fucking root for somebody else. No, I'm criticizing it because I love it and I want it to win. Uh, anyways, this creates mediocrity, uh, loss of the middle class, loss of innovation, punish the rich, which eventually leads to them leaving the country. Oh, yeah, that hasn't happened. That hasn't happened. Yeah, the rich haven't like, you know, their money leaves the country and then comes back in the form of an interest-free loan that is then forgiven. Jesus, buddy, come on. Uh, That reduces tax money coming into the government and loss of jobs because the richest people usually employ the most of the population. Oh, boy. Disarm the citizens so that they can't, cannot revolt. Control the media, like promoting the government. Control the media. There's two guys that own the media, Ted Turner and fucking uh, that other guy there, the guy from Fox News. Um, That's why we're Hatfields and McCoys right now. Disarm the citizens so they cannot revolt. Control the media, like promoting the government agenda with propaganda, then censorship of all their other ideas. Yeah, creating areas where you can only protest, which are down and around the corner. Away from the uh, the fucking media. Yeah, okay. Eventually, all rights are taken away. Dissenters, journalists, and politicians, oppositions are jailed or executed. Eventually, the leaders will be, uh, become exactly what they originally campaigned against. Jesus Christ, buddy. I, I, I've, I've forgotten what you're... He goes, there's much more to it on an economic level, but as a fellow moron, it's too complicated for me to understand. All right. I am also a fellow moron, but dude, all of that shit has happened. If you look at all the rights and everything that you have lost in the last fucking 20 years, um, I don't even know. I don't even begin in, in creating a boogeyman and racism, genocide, every we all of that shit. We've done all of that. We've done all of that. You know, when I was a kid, there was rules on media ownership. No one person could own any seven. It was rules of seven. No one person can own seven radio stations, newspapers, TV stations, blah, 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 in, in one market because they knew if you control, if you owned all of that, if you control the media, you control thought. And yet they've let Ted Turner and that fucking, uh, uh, I want to say Ralph Neighbor, Rupert Murdoch, do exactly that and present CNN and Fox News have the fucking balls to present the people that are on TV as journalists and then also acting as though you're watching news. You're not. You're watching propaganda. Okay, so there you go. All right. Okay, transgender fan. Hey, all right, look at me crossing over here. Hey, Billy, I've been listening to uh, the podcast since I was 16. I'm 22 now and I've enjoyed every episode, especially during quarantine. I'm a violinist, sculptor, and a trans man. Look at you. 
Uh, definition in the next paragraph. Thank you. And have been wanting to write in for a while. After hearing you read the letter a fan sent in about his trans friends attending his wedding, I thought now would be the time. Oh, beautiful. All right, let me do the recap. So this guy was um, getting married and not one but two of his friends that he was going to have be groomsmen either had transitioned or were in the process of transitioning. And he was like, am I an asshole if I don't want him to wear a dress? Okay, that was the question. So me knowing nothing about the subject, that didn't stop me from answering it. That's in, the, I believe, the previous or two episodes ago. Um, all right, so now we're going to actually hear from somebody uh, living the life here. First off, I do want to clar- clarify that by trans man, I mean I transitioned from female to male. Oh, fuck, okay. I didn't get that. <laughs> I thought trans man meant you went the other way. Okay. In, in, in instrument rating, that would be reverse sensing uh, on a VOR uh, for all you pilots out there. In short, I'm a he. In your response to the fan that wrote in, you said that transitioning seems like a massive emotional process, and you were exactly right. Hey, look at me. Look at me. Not bad for a cis white male. Uh, when I describe the experience, which I do openly to create a dialogue for people who are generally curious, I often say that transitioning is not an option, but more so the only option for, for most people like me. Let me ask you this. Before you totally committed, was there any doubt like, okay, I, I hope, because I mean, I hope I'm doing the right, I hope I'm getting this right. Because I can't tell you how many times I've misread my feelings. I mean, it, but the, the stakes were not that high. That's like fucking, you're going all in with the chips, so to speak. Uh, anyway, he goes, imagine you wake up one day with boobs and are, ha- and are expected to wear heels. After the novelty of having, of having 24-7 access to tits wears off, it fucking sucks. Let me read this again. Imagine you wake up one day with boobs and are expected to wear heels. All right, now, wait a minute. I thought you transitioned from a woman to a man. I mean, I mean, I transitioned from female to male. Okay. It says, imagine you wait. Oh, maybe she's, uh, he's putting me in this. I don't know. Imagine you wake up one day with boobs and are, have, and are expected to wear heels. After the novelty of having 24-7 access to tits wears off, it fucking sucks. Nobody chooses to go through all of that trouble of being a lot alienated from friends and family members on a whim. Well, there you go. You just answered my question. For me, if I wanted to have a future post high school, I had to make this step and I have avoided a lot of further mental dissonance, dissonance thanks to the scientists and surgeons who advocated for trans medicine. And yes, I will always trust the opinions of a scientist over a politician. Fair enough. As the wedding scenario goes, I can guarantee his trans grooms were just as conflicted as him. I also came out right before a relative's wedding and was given an ultimatum of you either lie about your identity if you want to remain a part of this family or you won't be welcomed back into our lives. Eh, It's just fucking, can you imagine your family saying that to you? I ended up playing violin at their ceremony for free and never getting invited to another family reunion. Wow. That is really fucking sad. I'm sorry that happened to you. Uh, hopefully, uh, Jesus, in the near future, that doesn't happen. How do you disown a fucking, your own kid? I, I don't get that. I don't get that. I mean, I draw the line of, you know, hearing my kid leave and then getting charged with the, at night and covering for a murder. <laughs> I mean, there are lines. Um, yeah, you do some dateline shit, you know. I mean, you're kind of out on your own. But I'd still visit you when you went to jail and I would be like, where did I fuck up that made you do something like that? Um, anyway, personally, if I were asked to be a bridesmaid before coming out as a guy, I would, I would have stepped down because I don't want to be the one guy in a traditional, traditionally female role. I'm betting this guy's trans grooms people felt similar. I have to fucking do the math on that. I would have stepped down because I don't want to be the one guy in a traditionally female role. Uh, I don't know what that means. I'm betting this guy's transgroom people felt the same. 
similarly. I hope you guys understood what that meant. I didn't get that one sentence. Okay, and here's where the rant opens up. All right, here we go. Taking the gloves off there. All right, a lot of trans people are, are, are really pissed by the false and performative allyship the far left has dumped on us with little work to back their claims up. Yeah, it's a fucking show. That's what I think so much of that liberal social justice fucking horseshit is. It's just for you to put on a little performance on your social media page. And people can be like, oh, wow, you're an ally. Here's your little rainbow fucking emoji. And then you can just go back to living your life and you're not getting your hands dirty. Um, it's like those white people that marched with Black Lives Matter as they were live Instagramming themselves. Like, look at me. I have a bandana on. I'm a fucking revolutionary. And then after that, they just went back to their life. <laughs> Got CrossFit in the morning. Um, we are identifying more as independents because we've experienced hate from the right and tokenism from the left. Oh, yeah, you get used. I mean, which is worse? At least, I mean, I know the hate, if it escalates to violence, is bad. But at least if somebody's just straight up says how they feel about you as opposed to just using you. Um, anyway, I think a lot of your jokes about trans people are actually more about performative cis people. I don't know what cis means, who are using trans issues for votes because they know we are a very vulnerable group. Uh, Well, they kind of do that with everybody. I guess that's the only positive way. Politicians always do that. They're always fucking looking for some fucking angle (coughs) for themselves. Anyway, but not all of them. They're not all bad. There's got to be some good ones in there. Trans people just want to live a normal life, start a family, and not be claimed as a political pawn. I was at my lowest depression before I started hormones and got my chest masculinization procedure. What chest did you go with? Are they good enough that you can pick one out? Because personally speaking, uh, you know, I would I would go fucking Matthew McConaughey. Uh, but here's the thing. You know what's funny is if they actually get it down someday where you could do that, all of these fucking people who are like anti-trans and all of that shit, if they find out that you can actually get a Matthew McConaughey chest and they're looking at their fucking man tits, they might do it. You know? I got the McConaughey. You know? You know, right before they fucking put the fucking gas on your face, you have headphones. And the last thing you hear is Matthew McConaughey going, all right, all right, all right. (laughs) And you wake up with a chiseled tan chest. Um, that'd be fucking hilarious if I did that as a redhead and my chest didn't match my, the whiteness of my head. Then I have to go reverse Michael Jackson, you know, do a reverse bleaching. Um, anyway, let's not make this about you, Bill. Anyway, he says, uh, sh- he says, uh, I haven't left the house in weeks. I hadn't left the house in weeks and nearly dropped out of school. Since transitioning, I'm happy, back on stage, volunteering, writing music. That's great. Teaching violin students, running my small business. There you go. Don't work for somebody else. And I have, have met someone special. Ah, look at you. I know I'm from an outside perspective being trans. I know from an outside perspective being trans seems crazy. If you knew the thunder and lightning between my fucking ears, I don't think anybody's crazy. I think it's fucking crazy to uh, go through life and not think that you're kind of fucking nuts yourself. You know, walking around thinking you have it all figured out. I think that that's fucking crazy. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, you know, like shit freaks me out without a doubt. I'm not saying this shit, but I will tell you when, when Bruce became Caitlin, there was definitely, you know, a what the fuck moment. Now I'm used to it. But what was weird about that was if you were like me, you weren't for some reason allowed to have that what the fuck moment, um, which is one of those things that the left is like psychotic with. It's like you you, you got you got to let everybody kind of go through their emotions as long as they're not hurting anybody. They're pr- you're processing it. That's all right. So anyway, this person says I felt the same way until I realized I would always be angry be an angry, sad person if I had stayed in the closet. I started listening to your podcast the same month I came out back in 2017 and have not been offended by the jokes 
about trans people. Contrary to what the far left or right wants you to think, trans folk have a pretty thick skin and we're no strangers to having, having to advocate for our rights. I've been doing a lot of work on undoing the anger I built up over my teenage years and listening to your show has given me laughs when I needed them the most. Thanks and go fuck yourself. Wasn't that great? Look at me, huh? I'm going to make that whole fucking thing about me. You know, the appeal of me is just really amazing. And you guys, I just want to say as a podcast justice warrior. um, All right. So if anybody is listening to this, and your kid is gay and they came out and you disowned him. Can you can you not do that to him? That's such a fucking horrible, horrible thing to do to somebody. Um, it really is. It really is. It's like, you know, just try to be, uh, you know, just fucking work your way through it. You know what I mean? It's a, <laughs> I, don't, I don't I don't get it. I don't fucking get it. That happens to me with one of my kids. I mean, it's you just be who the fuck you are and don't be a fucking asshole to other people. That's all I ask. Can you just do that? Great. All right. You're cool with me. Okay. Sign stealing equals joke stealing. All right. Hey, hey Billy Velocity Blue Balls. Oh, Velocity Blue Balls. Oh, that's the Ford Velocity Blue, which they're discontinuing in the F-250 in 2022. Uh, just wanted to reach out and see if I could change your perspective on the Astros sign stealing scandal, because honestly, every time you talk about it, I want to punch you in the face. Oh, do you? I don't give a fuck. Uh, so that being said, let's have some friendly discourse. Oh, are you let me off the hook. Um, the way I see it, the Astros using electronic video equipment to steal signs is very similar to comedians stealing each other's jokes. Oh, my God. This is almost like you took something that wasn't in my world and put it in my world. By golly, I think it's going to take two more sentences, and I'll come around to your opinion. All right. You really think I'm dumb, don't you? Uh, More specifically, if you apply the arguments defending the Astros to defending joke thieves, it's easy to see the hypocrisy. Oh, is it? You sound like Gwyneth Paltrow, like I'm reading her cookbook. It's all easy. Okay. Imagine me, someone who doesn't know jack shit about comedy, saying everyone is stealing jokes, but people only hate that comedian because they got caught. That is just like you saying someone who doesn't know jack shit about baseball, saying everyone is stealing signs, but people only hate on the Astros because they got caught. Um, yeah, but for this theory to work, every joke Every comedian would have to be stealing jokes. They're not. Okay, that's the difference. Everyone is stealing signs in baseball. That's why they have signs. That's why they fucking switch up signs. That's why in football they hold up the card with the fucking picture of the Eiffel Tower, a donut, and and, and fucking uh, Michael Douglas. Because people on the other side are stealing signs. Okay? Contrary to your analogy is I can do my act in front of 99% of fucking comedians and not have to worry about getting my jokes stolen because 99% of comedians do not steal jokes. But I will continue with your analogy. Um. And I like how you're ignoring the fact that the Red Sox and Yankees had $200 million roided up free agent teams and won a whole bunch of World Series. But evidently, that was okay. Um, And you're going to get these guys on sign stealing. Uh, Well, that'd be like me saying, well, that comedian was funny enough to sell out MSG anyway, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't. This analogy doesn't work, but I'll continue. I don't understand how you can be so outspoken against joke stealing yet still defend cheaters from a different profession. I'm not defending cheating. I'm not defending cheating. What I'm saying, sir, which which I think is hip, hypocritical, to use your word, and when I use this analogy, I think it's just going to be really easy for you to see, okay, is that for people to not look at teams that field $180, $200 million teams that had, like, future Hall of Famers on it that they got from other teams that were doing steroids and not question those champions 
those 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 World Series rings, but then be like, oh, these fucking dirty Astros is a joke. So here's my thing. If you're going to call them cheaters, you got to call all of them cheaters. That's my shit right there. Because my thing is, I believe that the same way I feel Barry Bonds was a victim of the steroid era. Where he was the best guy. He was the guy. He was the guy that if anybody was going to break the home run record, he was the guy that was going to do it. And then these other guys took steroids and became better than him. And then next thing you know, the president, Bill Clinton, is calling them. Congratulations. It's amazing. You must be getting a lot of pussy. Right? He's calling them. So then Barry Bonds, and no one did anything about it. So Barry Bonds is like, all right, if that's how the game's played, fuck it. Here's me on roids. And then everybody's like, oh, Barry Bonds, you fucking piece of shit. I think that's ridiculous. So I think it's ridiculous to fucking ignore what some of those bigger teams, Red Sox and Yankees and all of those guys did with those fucking super ridiculous budgeted fucking teams and the fact that not only that, like not, 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 that was so fucking unfair. Forget about that they had the money that they could do that and then just pay a fucking luxury tax and, and then fucking nobody gives them shit. Nobody says they were cheating and then the Astros come along. They get busted for stealing signs. And they're, they, they're like this secondary market team who can't hold on to their fucking stars because these other behemoths are vacuuming them up. So they go, all right, fuck it. Well, we got to steal signs to compete with you. And then they do. And then I'm supposed to feel bad for the fucking Yankees? Or if they beat the Red Sox, I'm supposed to feel bad for us? I don't. I don't. I would say that what the Astros did is when you go to jail, you're not supposed to make a shank, but everybody's got one. So in order to survive, you got to make one. Okay? So going back to your, your analogy there is your analogy is acting like every comedian steals jokes. They don't. Your analogy is acting like everybody in baseball and professional sports isn't cheating, and that's not the truth. It isn't. People get busted all the fucking time, pumping crowd noise in. Owners sitting on competition committees, changing the rule of the game to fucking make it work for them. The NFL, the whole fucking NFL, whatever the latest, most high-powered offense is that's working, everybody steals it. They break it down, figure out how it works, and then they incorporate it. They don't come up with their own original offense. They do the same things with defenses. I mean, I could go fucking on and on about it. So um, nice try with the joke stealing thing, but uh, no pun intended, swing and a miss. All right. Diamonds from cremation. What the fuck? Dear Billy, better oneself. My girlfriend recently shared something with me that immediately made me think of you. Apparently there are companies that will take the ashes of your loved ones and convert them into diamonds. I was wondering what your thoughts would be on this would be as some women appear to be turning their dead husbands into jewelry. <laughs> I immediately thought of my kids. It's like, if you could find value in my fucking burned up carcass and it makes your life easy, he, he goes, does it ever end, Bill? Is it ever enough? That's so fucking funny. That's a fucking killer stand-up bit. You should go do that somewhere. Anyway, oh, wait, we all steal jokes. Now I'm going to do it. Um, I'm a longtime listener and hearing you make efforts to better yourself over the years has been great. Big fan and keep up the great work. All right. Well, you know, I hope I'm inspiring you guys to do the same. Um, cause it is, I can't, I, I gotta tell you, I feel the best I've felt since, um, I don't know, in my adult life that I actually finally, for the first time, am starting to have control over this thing that was really embarrassing to me and really hurt people around me, which is my anger. And um, it's funny. If you go to therapy and you really get to the root and you really just fucking let it all go and figure out why you're angry, all of a sudden you look back on, I don't know, however long you've been angry, you being like, that's why I did this. This is why I did that. Oh, I did this. What a fucking asshole. That's why I drank the way I drank. All of this shit. It's like the end of a fucking movie. Uh, more like a streaming series where they, you find out who fucking did what, right? So um, it's been a great thing for me and it's been an even better thing for the people around me. So uh, 
Yeah, that's it. All right, people. And with that, go fuck yourselves. And I will check in on you on Thursday.